Today we are going to look at whether the MMA guru is currently the best trainer out there. After his direct involvement in this weekend's fight, I think it's time for us to have that discussion. This weekend we saw Israel Adesanya lose to Drikus Duplessis for the middleweight title. Drikus just looks unbelievable right now. Well the thing is he doesn't actually look unbelievable, but the sum of the parts is unbelievable. And we're going to get into all of that. But firstly, why am I saying that MMA Guru is a great trainer, is a great coach, is exactly the man that you want on your side? Just look at his involvement this weekend. Apologise, my voice is a little bit hoarse after the weekend. But just look at the MMA Guru's involvement this weekend. And it all started at the press conference. Before the presser, MMA Guru put out a brilliant video, I did enjoy it, about ammunition for Drickers to use at the press conference. Now, we just saw at the press conference the weight of the world seemed to be on Israel Adesanya's shoulders. Drikas used a couple of the points made by the MMA guru. I'm not going to go into too many of them, but particularly the point about Israel Adesanya growing up with servants really seemed to get under his skin. And it was this comment that led Israel Adesanya to start crying. It just seemed as though this was a man getting rattled, getting buckled by the pressure of the moment. And I'm not saying that Israel Adesanya fought badly, but who knows? The MMA guru's direct or indirect, whichever way you want to see it, involvement in this fight could have had some bearing. Look, Israel Adesanya didn't fight like a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. He just felt like a bit of an older version of that great Israel Adesanya. Adesanya, without a doubt now, I think it's clear, he's the second best middleweight of all time. And this does nothing to tarnish his legacy. But there was something missing. Maybe a slight killer instinct. Maybe a lack of sense of urgency. I know what the comeback will be, it'll be the Yoel Romero fight you'll allude to, other fights where Israel Adesanya has been a bit of a boring champion, but just think about his prime, he was so active, he gave us so many amazing finishes, Robert Whittaker, Paolo Costa to name but two, obviously the Derek Brunson finish when he was getting into his element, but I think now we're just seeing a fighter who's slightly past his best, I still think he'll beat the majority of the division, but Drikus Duplessis was just a better fighter on the night and he is currently a better fighter than Israel Adesanya. I saw an amazing comment on Reddit the other day that said, how do I explain to my grandkids how DDP became a champion? He's not an elite wrestler, he's not an elite jiu-jitsu guy, he's not an elite striker by any stretch, but the way I see it is all the things he does pretty well when it comes together is amazing. And I really feel a bit worried that I'm going to start seeing everyone appreciate what DDP does now, just like they did with Leon Edwards' last fight, and then he falls short or he gets figured out in his next fight. I'm not too sure about that. But I think DDP, at the moment, he's just so aggressive. He's so big as well. I've never known a fighter really talk about their size and the importance of their power ahead of a fight like this. It seems like he recognises more than any others the importance of being a big guy in your weight class and he uses his size and power more than anyone else in that division. You see a guy like Paolo Costa who's huge and now he fights tentatively. He's not using the gifts that God has given him, which is the size, the power. It's Jared Cannonier, he could be accused in his fight with Israel Adesanya of not using that size and power anyway. Anyway, I digress slightly. Let's just go back to where we were. So, recapping the fight, and we'll come back to more of the MMA guru chat later, but recapping the fight, uh, Dean Thomas, I saw in the review show, he said that Israel Adesanya was poor. He didn't fight well. And I don't agree with that. I do think that he fought pretty well. There were definitely moments in that fight. I loved the body targeting. I think he did a lot of stuff really well, but it just wasn't his night. It was DDP's night. It's DDP's time. As I said in my previous video, I struggle to see the fighter right now who beats DDP. I think a fight like Hamzat, everyone's saying Hamzat, if he beats Robert Whittaker convincingly, he'll pip Sean Strickland to that next title fight. But we know that Hamzat's gas tank is questionable. And DDP, for all the question marks over his gas tank, has shown that he just will not give up. He'll keep going and keep going. I'd expect that fight to be an absolute war. But if it gets past two and a half rounds, I could see the tide favouring DDP for sure. Let me know what you think about that. Elsewhere on the card, there's one honourable mention we need to give, which is to Dan Hooker against Mateusz Gamrot. I, like most people, like the odds makers, got this one wrong. I thought it was going to be 30-27 Gamrot, wrestling, takedowns, whatever. But Dan Hooker, again, as I mentioned before, is one of my favourite fighters. 
I would watch Dan Hooker fight every single weekend. Just the heart, the determination, and the skill. The skill gets slept on a lot. He's shown definite evolutions in his game. He easily could have given up positions a lot more than he did on Saturday night. But he showed aggression. He, that beautiful shot where he dropped Gamrot and had him really hurt. And the work that he was doing off the bottom. Those threats off the bottom. They've let us know that when it comes to wrestling, you can't just take people down and expect to be credited for it. You need to be aggressive. You need to be pushing the action. So if that means you get taken down onto your back, but you're the aggressor on the bottom, the judges are going to favour you for that. And Dan Hooker, it was a split decision. I think it was the right decision. Amazing to see Dan Hooker on this late career resurgence, really pushing it. Kai Kara France with a big win as well. But let's get back to talk about the MMA guru. Just what he's doing in the sport at the moment and why I say he might be the best coach in the UFC right now. Look, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek. But let's face it, have we seen an MMA pundit, MMA commentator, whatever you want to call it, have an impact on a fight, a pre-fight build-up at the very least, like the MMA guru did have for this one? The videos he's done on Adesanya, let's face it, he's not a fan of Israel Adesanya, but a lot of the things that he does say, whether you agree with him or not, are things that got under Adesanya's skin at this press conference. In a sport like fighting, where the mindset, the mind, the state of the mind is so important, Drickus Duplessis used the ammunition given to him by the MMA guru to dig at Adesanya, causing him to cry, causing him to be evidently rattled, clearly annoyed by what DDP was saying. And fighting emotionally is generally not the best idea. And could this have had some kind of impact on the result? I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the MMA guru. I really like his commentary. I think that it's definitely some kind of character he's playing, to what extent I'm not too sure. But I think he's doing great things for the sport right now, and I do rate him as a pundit. And I think that he gets people talking in the MMA space. So look, all the best to him. So should you be worried if the MMA guru is on the side of your opponent for the next fight? Well, I guess that all depends on you, your resilience. I'm not saying Adesanya isn't resilient, but clearly these comments got to him. The, the press conference is evidence enough for that. But if the MMA guru has you as an enemy and he wants to go after you and you've got someone who clearly gets under people's skin like DDP, we saw what happened with the Strickland before the Strickland fight. He was clearly under his skin. I think he made Strickland cry as well. And now Adesanya. It's just not a good look. What is it do you think about DDP other than obviously the MMA guru's involvement? Is it his confidence? He just seems so calm at all times. He's one who really doesn't seem to get rattled by what people say. I think that could be a big factor in it. He just has this calmness about himself. Clearly, he's a very big guy. He has massive self-belief. We've seen that. He has a huge self-belief in his team. And if you weren't a DDP fight before this fight, you definitely are now. Look, you can tell me I'm gushing over him now. I think that he's just a great fighter. And I think we are going to see some more respect put on his name. But... Is it one of those things like Leon Edwards? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I'm really intrigued to see whether the next fight is Sean Strickland or Robert Whittaker slash Hamzat. Who would you rather see him fight against? And on that subject, what's next for both of these fighters? What are the consequences of this fight? If we look at first, Israel Adesanya, as we said before, the second best middleweight of all time. I think yeah, that's undeniable at this point. What's he going to do? I think it only makes sense to him at this point to either go up to 205 and fight Alex Pereira. I don't know how that would how they'd make that quite work. Something like Adesanya against Khalil Roundtree would have been quite a nice matchup. Obviously, Roundtree's got the next title shot, so that's not going to happen now. Or Adesanya can fight Sean Strickland at 185, provided that Strickland somehow misses out on the next title shot, which he's been promised. But look, we're used to the UFC. We know how things change very quickly. All it takes is an injury. Injury at best, let's face it, or a broken promise at worst, and then we'll have a completely different matchup in the division. Drickus Duplessis, what's next for him? He already mentioned about going up to 205 because Pereira said he wanted to drop down to face DDP at middleweight, but I think that fight needs to happen at light heavyweight. However, I don't think it's time yet for DDP to move up. I think there's still business to attend to at 185. I'd love to see the fight against Hamzat. A rematch against Robert Whittaker would be brilliant as well. Whilst, yes, Robert Whittaker was beaten convincingly by DDP, I think it's worth giving him another shot. Robert Whittaker just looks unbelievable, doesn't he? He does so many things well. He just, he'll just he take on any challenge the UFC give him. And I think he definitely deserves another shot at the belt, another shot at the title. And Hamza, 
Hamzat is the most frustrating fighter in the UFC for me. I love watching him fight. I love the aggression. I love the craziness. You know, he's clearly a guy who has massive self-belief, but at the same time, he just cannot get healthy. He cannot get fit. He keeps disappointing fans by pulling out over and over again. I think this has to be the fight. Hamzat, Robert Whittaker. If Hamzat pulls out of this, I think that he, they have to have a very serious conversation about his future in the UFC. He needs to get active. He needs to be fighting. And I'd love to see Hamzat, whether it's for the title or not, fighting DDP somewhere down the line. I just think stylistically, it'll be an absolute war. Look, later on, rounds four or five, it'll slow down big time, but it'll be an epic matchup. Let me know who you want to see for both fighters next and whether or not you agree with my opinion about the MMA guru's involvement in this fight.